So you see how they're in the same family. What if you took the traditional school day and flipped it on its head? Not literally, of course, but having lessons offered at night at home and homework done by day in the classroom. That's the experiment underway at Clintondale High School, just outside Detroit, an area still reeling from the economic and social ills of the nearby city. The school serves many low-income families and faces tight budgets and declining enrollment. So what's the number part that I'm going to need for all three? Just three years ago, almost half of Clintondale's ninth graders were failing math, science, and English. And overall school performance was ranked in the lowest 5% in Michigan. Is that the one you want me to go with? Yeah. Principal Greg Green decided to take a risk. Frankly, we weren't doing very well, and so, you know, we had to make a change. I mean, we were, we were desperate for change. His aha moment came while coaching his 11-year-old son's baseball team. Having learned to record and post instructional videos for his players to watch outside of practice, he was struck by how much time was then left to focus on individual players on the field. He saw the educational potential starting with the power of videos kids can go back and watch them as many times as they want and, and in me as an, as an instructor or expert I don't have to redo that all the time and I can spend my time with with the students in class and actually assisting them and so if I could do that with 11 year olds imagine what we could do with 15 or 16 year olds doing math. Green went all in flipping the entire school urging his staff to rethink the use of technology and how it complements traditional teaching and getting local businesses to help fund the effort. So the legislative branch makes the laws. Now lectures are recorded and posted online. The American Civil War lasted from 1861 to 1865. Or teachers can assign outside videos from the popular Khan Academy and TED Talks. Pretty small, yeah. Students watch these videos as homework outside of class. Why do you say it's plutonium? In class, students now do what was once considered homework assignments designed to test learning comprehension. Clintondale teachers say this allows more time for one-on-one -on -one help and often encourages students to collaborate in problem solving. But English teacher Rob Damron said it took some convincing. When we first did this, it was funny to look around that staff meeting and look at a lot of staff members, you know, especially the ones that have been here 25, 30 years and saying, what, what are you talking about? What's a blog? You know, what's a Google group? Apostrophes makes a noun show ownership or possession. For teaching for 20 years, I know what lessons kids are going to have a, a problem with. But I think with so doing this flipped so approach, said, there's problems I didn't even know existed. So you really can't hide back there in the corner and say, yeah, I got it. You know, and then the teacher sees later on. Well, no, he really didn't get it. One problem the school faced head on, students who can't afford or don't have access to technology outside of class. They're given extra time in the school's media lab. Segregation before 1954. Taking the technology-driven approach further, some lesson plans are now tailored to have students use the latest trends in social media. Thanks to the 19th Amendment, us women have the right to vote. We deserve the vote. We deserve the vote. Like this project that required constitutional amendments to be summed up in six seconds for the popular website Vine. Green says that taken all together, after three years, the flip is paying off. Um, our ACT gains have, have shown you know, doubling the national average as far as ACT gains. You know, state testing, we've had some mixed results on that. And we've also seen an increase in graduation rates to almost 90 percent, college acceptance rates at 80 percent. Senior Darrell Wallace Jr. is one example. His grades have risen from a 2.5 GPA as a freshman to 3.5 as a senior. And he says the flip has played a big role. He now watches videos on his cell phone while taking the bus home into a rough section of Detroit where he lives with his mother and four sisters. I really looked at the videos more because I knew I might not have as much time at home because my sisters are in college and they need the computer, so I'm like, I can do it on my phone. And the bus ride is like 30 minutes, so I probably can get like half of my assignment done. Daryl's mother, Sabrina Young, also likes the flipped model, saying there's only so much she can do to help with traditional homework. Especially algebra. So 
him doing it at school is a plus for him and as well as me because I just didn't remember the majority of it. The popularity of online learning has surged in recent years and flipped classrooms have started popping up everywhere from elementary schools to some of the nation's top universities. Clintondale is the first U.S. high school to do a total flip. Harvard's Justin Reich has been studying the trend and says he's cautiously optimistic. What is exciting to me about the flipped classroom is that it gets teachers asking two really important fundamental questions. What are the best ways for me to use my time, especially the very precious time I have in classrooms with my students? And then what are the kinds of direct instruction that I could provide that could be digitized so that people could watch it again? You'll notice that the last set of notes I gave you were for week five. But Reich says that flipping alone isn't enough. As with any lesson plan, it all depends on exactly what's being offered. If what we see from the flipped classroom is that we take um, bad lectures and uninteresting worksheet problems that characterize a lot of the experience that students have in schools, and we simply flip the order of those two things, the odds that we see significant improvement in our schools is pretty low. And so now we're going to be taking the derivative with respect to T. Meanwhile, some individual teachers are experimenting with the flipped classroom on their own. Three years ago, Stacy Roshan flipped her upper-level math classroom at the private Bullis High School outside of Washington, D.C., where students pay up to $35,000 a year in tuition. What's the derivative of pi r squared h? She says it's been working for her, but that it might not be for everyone. I think what's the most important thing is that you really think through what your problem is. Um, I wouldn't say that because everybody's doing the flipped classroom, it's cool you should do the flip classroom too. My problem was really time, anxiety, and perhaps if I went to another school, I would do things completely differently. One added surprise for Roshan in structuring her class this way is what she learned about the reach of her online lessons. I get thank you letters from students all the time, um, not even just from the U.S., but overseas too, and I, it, that part always amazes me. Back at Clintondale, Principal Greg Green's big experiment is getting a lot of attention. More than 200 educators from around the world have visited the school, trying to draw lessons from the flipped classroom. It's no secret that educators are facing a number of challenges. We're dealing with larger class sizes, increased accountability, and disengaged students. I'm sure we've all seen this before. Students asleep at their desk instead of paying attention in class. Now I don't think this is the result of poor teachers. In fact I think the majority of teachers really care about engaging their students. But I do believe that cramming students into lecture theatres, talking at them for two hours and hoping something will stick is an outdated approach. Fortunately, a movement is building to deliver academic content in new ways ways that grabs the attention of students, increases class discussion, and allows teachers to spend more time interacting with their pupils. Personally, I've had great success with the use of online video lectures. Videos like this one and those on the screen that consist of rich media content. I use these videos not just to supplement traditional lectures, but replace them entirely. In fact, for several entire courses at RMIT University, we have now replaced face-to-face -face lectures with online videos. Students watch the videos at home or anywhere else they want before attending tutorials in which we discuss and apply what they've learned. In effect, the lectures have become homework and what used to be homework is now done in class. You might have heard people refer to this as flipping the classroom. If you haven't yet, I guarantee you will. This approach is being incredibly well received by students, by teachers, and by educational institutions. I believe there are three main reasons for this. First of all, we make the lecture content appealing to students. Making a video forces me to review and streamline my lecture material, and on average a one hour lecture will be reduced down to a 15 to 20 minute video. Second, students can access lecture content when and where they want it. Today, students already seek out information online. Let's embrace this rather than fight it. 
We've also found that students like to pause and replay videos, a significant advantage over traditional lectures. And finally, the use of online video creates more time in class. We get the theory out of the way first and then in class get down to the real work of discussing and applying what's being learned. So, based on all these benefits, I want to encourage you to look at how you could use video lectures in your course. They'll help you do more with less, improve the quality of your content, and engage your students. There are heaps of resources available to help you get started, from e-learning communities to instructional YouTube videos. But the important point is you have to want to explore what's possible. I hope this video has encouraged you to do so. As a flipped classroom teacher, I've seen lots of misconceptions around what the flipped classroom is and what the flipped classroom is not. So, rather than discussing what the flipped classroom is in my practice, I'll discuss a list that most flipped classroom teachers can agree the flipped classroom is not. So, let's get started. The flipped classroom is not the Khan Academy. While the Khan Academy is an excellent resource for use in and out of the classroom, the flipped classroom is special because classroom teachers create the videos to suit their students' needs. We want students to be active in their learning, not droids sitting in front of screens getting a lecture from someone halfway across the globe. The videos are an extension of the teacher and help create a strong relationship between student and teacher. The flipped classroom is not a replacement of teachers. This couldn't be further from the truth. In the flipped classroom, the role of the teacher is more important than ever. There is no sitting at the back of the class reading the newspaper and having a coffee, as much as I'd like to sometimes. In the flipped classroom, the teacher is active all day. Teachers get a chance to work with every student, every class. The flipped classroom is not all about the videos. Yeah, videos are the backbone of the flipped classroom, and I am hoping one of these days to produce a video that goes viral and perhaps appear on Ellen. However, it is the flexibility the videos provide that is a true benefit. Teachers now have additional classroom time where they can develop rich learning activities to extend their students' experience. The flipped classroom is not the silver bullet. The flipped classroom does not solve all that is broken in education. If it did, I'd probably be filthy rich. It's just one tool to increase student learning. Inflexibility, lack of classroom time, and student-centered classrooms are problems that I feel the flipped classroom helps solve. The flipped classroom is not a one-size-fits-all teaching approach. Each flipped classroom teacher develops an approach that works for them and their students. As an example, some teachers have students watch the videos in class, some students watch them at home, in a car, on a bus, on a plane, it's turning into a Dr. Seuss book. And some even get the students to create the videos themselves. The limits of the flipped classroom are only as limited as the teacher's imagination. The flipped classroom is not top-down. The flipped classroom is 100% driven by teachers. For the model to be authentic, it needs to be initiated and created by the teacher for the teacher. How often have we attended a staff meeting to be presented with the newest flavor of the week to never give it another thought? The flipped classroom is a flavor teachers want to do because they believe in it. And it's delicious. The flipped classroom is not a teacher holiday. The flipped classroom is anything but a holiday. The amount of time that goes into creating quality videos and activities is second to none. In the classroom, teachers are no longer spending their time lecturing. Instead, they're constantly interacting with their students, inspiring, observing, and as we all know, sometimes prodding. The flipped classroom is not easy. Students have been in the traditional model of school for their entire educational career. They like playing school. Some of them are very good at it. Now that we want them to play learning, it can be a tough pill for them to swallow. And lastly, the flipped classroom is not all about students watching videos for homework. It's about students using videos when and where appropriate for their learning journey. Many of my students find that they use their classroom time so effectively they rarely have homework. And believe me, they love this. Now they have time for things that truly matter to them, like Twitter and Facebook. These are just a couple of things I think the flip classroom is and the flip classroom is not.